Welcome to IELTS Juice. Let's start assessing this writing. So it's a report and the rubric or the prompt says, the given charts give information about the number of students at university in the UK from 1991 to 2001, government spending and the types of family economic background they came from in 1991. So as I can see, we have a pie chart pie chart that focuses only on one year and with three income brackets and then there are two different diagrams a bar chart and a line graph so let's see what the response tells us the information of the number of attendees or the information on the number of attendees at the university at university in the UK in the period of 1991 to 2001 is compared in the given bar chart. Um, one thing to note is that uh, as long as we are presenting the data, we can use present simple. So although the information here goes back to 1991 and uh, until 2001, which is all past, as long as we are presenting the data, present simple tense is fine. And government expenditure on each student during this period is illustrated in the line chart. The pie chart shows the financial situation of students in 1991. So it's a very good introduction. It covers, um, it, it introduces the task to us. So it covers all the three visuals. Overall, it is abundantly clear that during the survey, the number of students, um, the number of students, comma, participating university. This comma is not necessary. We are, uh, we need to define who the students are, which students, who are they. Uh, because of that, we need a we need defining relative clause, and. Uh, and this one is a contracted form. So it's, it's like students who uh, participated at university. And uh, we, we contracted it into uh, participating. We don't need a comma here. So the number of students participating university or participating at university in the UK. Surge again. Uh, that comma is again after you after the UK is not necessary. Surged, uh, surged. Let's check the number. Surged. Uh, I wouldn't call this surge because it sounds uh, surge is more dramatic. It, it's a significant change. It is a significant change, but still, uh, I would use words like went up. Uh, surge implies a, a dramatic change. While government spending in every pupil, well, pupil, again, is not a very good choice of word because pupil focuses on very young, very, very young learners. And university students, we know they are not that young. So a significant decrease. In 1991, a majority of students came from middle class families. Okay, fine. Looking at the bar chart, uh, now we are focusing on the bar chart. I like this trend actually. Uh, for those who wish to get a seven, it's a safe strategy to focus on one visual at a time. You just focus on it. You report the, date, the data here. You're done. You're completely done with that visual. And then you move on to the next visual. That's a very good, that's safe and very good strategy. Looking at the bar chart, it can be seen that in 1991, just over a million students were at the university in the UK. At the university, um, I would say at university or where at universities, you can generalize. Uh, there's a lesson at IELTS Juice on how to generalize. Uh, I'll put it in the description below. In the following four years, this number increased to over 1,500,000 students 
which remained stable, uh, which remained stable until 1997. Okay. Mm, the number remained stable, remained relatively stable. So again, uh, it's not wrong, but as you can see, the data is not reported with maximum accuracy. You can check that uh, 1,500, it hovered a bit, so it, it did not remain stable, but still, uh, uh, you could say it remained in, in, a, in a certain uh, level, like between 1.5 million and 1.6 million, for instance. Before, ex before experiencing a peak of just over 2 million students in 1999. Finally, I, again, I really like this transition. So we, we call them discourse markers, words like finally, secondly, firstly. And these words that, uh, whose responsibility is to transit from, help us transit from one sentence to another is very well used here. The number of students uh, had slightly dipped. Uh, we don't need to use past perfect here. We are, we are talking about a period in time in the past, so we know when it started when, and when it ended. So past perfect is really not necessary. A simple past tense would suffice. Dipped to 2 million by 2001. Regarding the line chart, in 1991, the government ex expended about 6,500 pounds. 6,500 is definitely more than one. And pound, the word pound, like the word dollar and euro, they are countable. Uh, money is uncountable, but dollar, pound, and euro can be one dollar or two dollars. One pound, two pounds. So here, 6,500 pounds for each student. But this amount of subsidy, uh, there's a missing Y here, was cut, oops, uh, cut uh, the, the past simple form. All, the th all three forms of the verb cut is cut, cut, cut. So it was cut until 1996 to just below 5,000 pounds. The expenditure, again, another not very accurate use of past perfect tense. And the verb remain is an intransitive verb. Uh, it means you don't need an object here. And because of that, you cannot use, the use it in a passive voice. So the expenditure remained unchanged. Past simple and an active voice. If we look at the pie chart, it can be obvious. It can be obvious. Like, is it obvious or not? Um, I'm joking here, but I mean, some people can see it and some people cannot. Like some people have night vision and some people don't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Again, I'm just joking here. Uh, either it is obvious or not. So it is obvious that the main student's families, I love the punctuation here, you see, the apostrophe comes after S because students here is plural, students. Students' families uh, had middle incomes with 62% of the whole numbers and 30% of them came from wealthy families in 1991. Only a mere 8% of them were poor. 215 words. Now, let's uh, look at the overall band score. As I can see here, yes, uh, with the safe strategy, the task achievement for this report is seven. The visuals were all addressed and reported. It doesn't have that level of accuracy, but it's not inaccurate. So the information is accurately reported. It could be more accurate with little details that requires uh, a sophisticated level of control over language. 
Again, coherence cohesion is seven. You can see the transition from one sentence to another is very good. The transition from one visual to another is clear. So you have this overall uh, coherence of the data being presented to you. That's totally beautiful and well organized. You can see the paragraphing is six. Uh, we do not assess paragraphing for uh, reports and letters uh, up until it becomes, uh, we, we are checking whether it's eight or nine. So at this range, it's okay. Uh, six is not very effective here. This, the candidate still gets a seven. Lexical resource, we saw some poor choice of words. And uh, yes, there are occasional errors. The number of errors were not that high. Uh, but there were errors that they were not very effective. Like if I am a reader and I read cut-ted, uh, which is, by the way, accurately spelled, if it were a word, uh, I understand it's the past form of cut. So the information is not lost here. I just know that this word is not a good choice of word. Uh, that, by the way, falls under grammatical range and accuracy um, column. So the student needs to know the function of the verb cut here. Um, or, you know, to pluralize, uh, again, going back to lexical resource, I forgot to mention, uh, pound becomes pounds. That's very important. Uh, for grammatical range and accuracy, uh, Verbs which are intransitive, verbs that they do not get an object, cannot form passive voice structures. That is also something you need to look for and be careful of. And the, the, the inaccurate use of past perfect tense in some cases were a little misleading and that affected the understanding uh, of, the, um, of the whole report. So that's why you can see that there are errors, and these errors can reduce communication, uh, although only in rare instances. Anyway, overall, this was a very well-written report. I really enjoyed reading it. I hope you do as well. Remember, your letters, reports, and essays are your representatives. So make sure they do their jobs well. Take care. Have a lovely day.